this was my mom's old song. She used to sing all the time. I prayed here before. Uh, it's about a good old man in the Bible, old church. Centurion of Augustus Span, and entering into a ship of Arab 
at Dramidium, we launched, meaning to sail by the coast of Asia, one Aristarchus, a Macedonian of Thessalonica, being with us. And the next day we touched at Sidon, and Julius courteously entreated Paul and gave him liberty to go unto his friends to refresh himself. And when we had launched from thence, we sailed under Cyprus because the winds were contrary. And when we had sailed over the sea of Cilicia and Pamphylia, we came to Myra, a city of Lycia. And there the centurion found a ship of Alexandria sailing into Italy, and he put us therein. And when we had sailed slowly many days, and scarce were come over against Snidius, the wind not suffering us, we sailed under Crete over against Salmon. And hardly passing by it, came unto a place which is called the Fair Havens, nigh whereunto was the city of Lycia. Now when much time was spent, and was sailing was now dangerous, because the fast was now already passed, Paul admonished them, and said unto them, Sirs, I perceive that this voyage will be with hurt and much damage, not only of the lading, of the sh lading and ship, but also of our lives. Nevertheless, the centurion believed the master and the owner of the ship more than those things which were spoken by Paul. And because the haven was not commodious to winter in, the more part advised to depart thence also, if by any means they might attain to Venice, and there to winter, which is an haven of Crete, and lieth toward the southwest and northwest. And when the south wind blew softly, supposing that they had obtained their purpose, loosing thence, they sailed close by Crete. But not long after, there arose against it a tempestuous wind called Jeroclodon. You may be seated. Let us pray. Lord, Heavenly Father, Lord, I want to thank you, Lord, for the worship that's occurred in your house tonight. Lord, I believe that heaven is well satisfied tonight because you've gotten praise under your name. Lord, I know always if we come in, Lord, and we make it about Jesus Christ, that you're well satisfied with the proceedings. And so, Lord, I pray that all of us would be well satisfied with the proceedings when we make it about Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that it's been that way this evening. Lord, that the songs have brought glory to your name, that testimonies have brought glory to your name. Uh, Lord, as I, as I stopped to listen for a moment as we was praying, Lord, I've heard prayers uh, that were bringing glory to your name, and I want to thank you for that tonight, Lord. Uh, and Lord, now as we come to this part of the service, uh, I pray we not mess that up, Lord. Uh, uh, but Lord, that we bring glory and honor and praise under the name of Jesus. Uh, uh, Lord, for there's many ways to praise you, Lord. Uh, uh, Lord, in testimony, in song, uh, in tears, in shout, uh, in a hand raised in a joyful heart, Lord. Uh, uh, Lord, in a message, Lord, I pray that all of it, Lord, will bring glory to your name tonight. Uh, Lord, we love you. We thank you. Give us the words that are needful for the hour, Lord. Uh, for we have no ability, Lord, but we're wholly dependent upon you. And we trust you. We love you. And we thank you. It's in the name of Jesus that we pray. In the name I have. I want to bring a message tonight out of verse number 13. And when the south wind blew softly, supposing that they had obtained their purpose, Loosing thence, they sailed close by Crete. And now, yeah, I, I'm not a whole lot of a storyteller usually, but I've got a little story to tell this evening. Uh, believe it or not, in, in five years of marriage, uh, my wife has made some, some observations about me. Uh, and yeah, you don't have to respond to that. Uh, amen. Uh, but, but she made a, a, one really astute observation that I, I really... I hate to admit it. I, I really do. I promise you. I really do hate to admit it that she was right uh, about me there a couple years ago. We were driving somewhere, and I don't remember where. It doesn't matter. But before we made it very far out of, uh, away from the house, probably fifty or forty or fifty yards or so, we realized we'd forgotten something, and and, and so no big deal. Just going to go back to the house and get it. Uh, uh, and, and, and so. The way our road is set up, you pull out of our driveway and you go a little ways and there's a, a, a sharp right turn and, and I, I was just past that turn. And, 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 but there's also two driveways right there. So most people would have just backed straight into that driveway, pulled out and drove back to their house. I put the car in reverse and backed around the corner the whole way back to the house and into my driveway. And... <laughs> We pulled in and she started laughing and I, I, I didn't understand what was going on. She said, you do everything the hard way. She's right. 
I do everything the hard way. But what we want to preach on tonight for just a moment is this. The easy way and the hard way. The easy way and the hard way. And, and, and there is an easy way and a hard way uh, uh, to do just about everything that we do in life. And sometimes there's more than one easy way and sometimes there's more than one hard way. And sometimes there's in the middle ways. But, but to oversimplify it, uh, uh, there's almost always an easy way and a hard way to do just about anything. Uh, uh, but sometimes uh, uh, what we do, uh, oftentimes, let me say this and uh, it'll make more sense in a moment. Uh, 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 but... but the, the results of the easy way and the hard way are often the same. Mm -hmm. The end result is we was in the driveway and got what we needed. Okay? It took the same amount of time, basically, because I drove a little bit slower, driving in reverse, than I would have gone forward. I, I, but if I had backed up and turned around, then I would have taken an extra second to do that. The, same, the, the, the results were the same. So the easy way and the hard way ended up the same way. So which one was right and which one was wrong? Neither one. It, they, they just work. Uh, but, but what we often do uh, uh, is we confuse easy and hard with right and wrong. Yeah. We say this. I love people, okay? Y'all amuse me. So, so we say so-and-so person always takes the easy way out. And we say that as a bad thing. And we also say Work smarter, not harder. And that's a good thing. Uh, and so it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Uh, but the point I'm trying to make is this. Neither the easy way nor the hard way is always the right way. The easy way isn't always what's right. And the hard way isn't always what's right. So... Let me get back in the Bible and it'll, it'll make a lot more sense what I'm trying to say. What the... Your minds probably all went to the same place when I, when I said what the title was, when I said what the topic was. Everybody's mind, I bet, went to the second half at least of Proverbs 13 and 15. Yeah. Good understanding giveth favor. I, I never hear that part quoted. I, I, I've only ever heard that part quoted a, a couple times in my life, but we always quote the latter path. Yeah. But the way of transgressors is hard. Now the way that, that I teach that verse and preach that verse, and, and if you don't agree with it, uh, don't, don't worry about it. Just go along with me for now. And, and you can tell me about, about how you, you teach it and preach it next uh, after we're done. Uh, 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 but the way that I deal with that is I say this, and I can back it up with Scripture. Life happens to the lost, being the transgressor, and to the saved, just the same. Amen. Life happens in both cases. Amen. But it's hard to go through the life when life happens without Christ. Amen. 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 Now, now that's not to say uh, uh, that, that it's not sometimes hard to go with it with Christ. Uh, uh, oh, but uh, on those days uh, uh, when I think uh, uh, as a Christian, uh, uh, on those days when I think it's a hard day, uh, I can't imagine uh, uh, what that day would be like. Without joy unspeakable and full of glory. I can't imagine uh, uh, what that day would be like uh, uh, without peace which passeth all understanding uh, uh, that keeps your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. Uh, uh, I can't imagine uh, uh, what that day would be like uh, without the kingdom of God being righteousness and peace and joy uh, uh, in the Holy Ghost. Uh, 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 and so, uh, uh, to put it scripturally, what I'm trying to say, uh, in Matthew chapter 8, uh, uh, verse number 24, it said this, uh, uh, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, Jesus talking, and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. Now remember the first half of our verse, that no, everybody only ever quotes the second half, is, is good understanding giveth favor. To use some synonyms here, if we have a good understanding, that makes us wise, okay? Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man. So now we know we're in the first half of the verse, is all I'm trying to say. Which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house. And it fell not. For it was founded upon a rock. Thank you, Lord. I'll share a new thought with you in a minute. 
And every one that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man. Now we're in the latter half of the verse. Which built his house upon the sand, and the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. Now I want you to realize that I illustrated the point that life happens. The same storm hit both houses. Only one of them fell. But I, the Lord got, I just told you, the Lord gave me a new thought, so I was just reading that to her. I'd share it with you in a second. Uh, uh, it, don't, it just says that the man who built his house upon the rock, he just said his house didn't fall. Right. He didn't say he didn't lose a shingle. He didn't say that he didn't have to put some siding back up after it was done. He didn't say that the thunder didn't scare him. He didn't say, uh, 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 amen, uh, 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 sometimes we equate, thank you Lord, uh, 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 sometimes we equate uh, uh, losing a shingle in our life uh, uh, as the house collapsing. Uh, uh, amen. Uh, 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 we've got to realize uh, uh, that if the foundation is on the rock, uh, uh, we can put the shingle back on. Uh, uh, if the foundation is on the rock, uh, uh, the house is still standing. Uh, uh, the siding can be put back on. Uh, 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 oh, but the house will not fall. Amen. That's the difference. Uh, uh, that, that's what that verse means. Uh, uh, what it doesn't mean is this, uh, 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 that life will be easy. Amen. Amen. It does not mean, amen. Uh, uh, it means uh, uh, that it will be better uh, with Christ. Uh, uh, that means that if Christ's in the boat, uh, uh, the boat's not going down. Uh, uh, that means if our life is founded on Christ, uh, 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 amen, we've got someone to go to, uh, but he never promised that it was going to make life a rose garden. Amen. Amen. So let me put this another way. So I, I had to say that first. Otherwise y'all would say, Daniel's saying the Bible's wrong. <laughs> Daniel's not saying the Bible's wrong. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but, talking about now, the, the, uh, you understand what I mean now. I, I, I wanted to say what, uh, what the way of a transgressor's hard means before I say, think about this for a moment. What do you have to do to be lost? Nothing. Nothing. There, 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 there are requirements to be a Christian. There, there are requirements. Number one, to be saved, confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in thy heart, God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. That's to be saved. Uh, but then there's also requirements uh, as a Christian to be ye holy as I'm holy. Uh, 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 there's a way, uh, uh, if you're going to walk with Christ, that you're going to walk. Uh, and I don't ever uh, 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 try to get into the little details of that uh, uh, because the Lord is more than capable uh, and I'm more than capable of making a mess. Uh, 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 but understand, there is a way uh, uh, that you will be expected to walk Amen. as a Christian. There are no requirements to live life as a lost person. I don't hold. Uh, uh, so, uh, that's part of why. I, uh, uh, that's just uh, the real reason why. It's because the Lord never leads me to her very rarely ever. Uh, 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 but, but part of why I believe that to be is uh, 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 that, that I don't really ever preach often on, on, on any specific sins uh, is because uh, uh, the Lord is more than able to handle that. Uh, uh, and, and somebody who's lost, none of those sins are going to take them to hell. Rejecting Jesus does. Uh, uh, and so I just make it about Jesus uh, 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 and he'll handle the rest of it. Uh, 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 see, uh, uh, think about the Apostle Paul. That's who we're reading about in Acts chapter 27. Uh, 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 realize that he's on that boat and we'll get into more of it in a second. Uh, he's on that boat as a prisoner, not a passenger. And he didn't have no time in jail before he became a Christian. Paul was if I can say it this way, he was living high on the hall Amen. before he accepted Christ. Paul was, was one uh, uh, who was well, well to do with the higher ups uh, uh, in Jerusalem, a uh, Pharisee of Pharisees, uh, 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 according to the law, blameless. Uh, uh, he was one uh, uh, that had the papers and the orders uh, uh, to take the Christians and to cast them into jail. Uh, uh, and if he was doing that, I guarantee you that meant he was getting paid. And so, we know that he grew up at the foot of Gamal. That he had a good worldly life, if I can say it that way. He had money. And yet, as a Christian, he's beat, beaten, shipwrecked, 
<coughs> in perils of his own countrymen, stoned, in prison. So, what I'm trying to say is this. He was going the hard way. He was going the hard way. And so that covers lost and saved. But as a Christian also, past, past the point of salvation, now living as a Christian, there is still an easy way and a hard way to do things. But when we're faced with choices, we have to be careful to base our choice not on which way is the easy way and which way is the hard way, but on which way is the right way. Amen. Amen. To line up with the Word of God and to line up with the will of the Lord as He calls in our own lives. So let's look back now. I wasn't meaning to ignore our text verse. We just hadn't made it there yet. Let's look back now at our text verse in verse number 13. And when the south wind blew softly, supposing that they had obtained their purpose, loosing thence, they sailed close by Crete. Why did they decide to press ahead? Uh, it wasn't because uh, 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 they had a great weather forecaster uh, 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 that told them everything was going to be all right. Uh, uh, it wasn't because uh, 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 it wasn't because they showed great hubris either. Uh, uh, they weren't just saying whatever comes up, we'll deal with it. Uh, uh, they said the south wind blew softly. Yeah. Yeah. In other words, they saw that that was the easy way. See what we make the mistake of so often is assuming that because a way looks easy, that's the way the Lord is instructing us to go. We, we make the mistake often of, of assuming uh, 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 that, that what the Lord gives us to do, uh, He'll open that door so wide that it looks so easy uh, 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 that we cannot miss it. Uh, uh, if I can say it that way, uh, 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 yes, He might open a door wide open, but sometimes He opens the door wide open to the hard way. Uh, 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 see, here's the problem with their assumption in verse number 13. If nothing had been said to them, then I don't, uh, and this is just Daniel for 10 seconds, and then you can do with it what you will, throw it out if you want to. But if nothing had been warned, nothing had been warned to them, they did nothing wrong. Just happened. But the problem was they had received a warning. Yes, amen. In Acts chapter 27, verse 10, Paul yes. speaking, and said unto them, Sirs, I perceive. That this voyage will be with hurt and much damage. Not only of the lading and ship, but also of our lives. Verse 11, Nevertheless, the centurion yeah. believed the master and the owner of the ship more than those things which were spoken by Paul. When I read those verses, I see something happening. I read the Bible when I think about it applicationally, okay? That's just how I read and I, I see something happening. I, I, I see uh, 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 the man of God coming in on, on a Saturday night or a Sunday or whatever day it is or whatever church. Uh, uh, and I see uh, uh, a warning going out uh, uh, about something about life. Uh, uh, amen. The Lord knows what it is. Uh, and it don't matter what it is uh, 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 for the example. Uh, 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 amen. Uh, I see the warning going out. Uh, uh, and yet I see people saying this. I don't need man to tell me. Now Clarence always says the example of people saying, I don't listen to man. Clarence always reminds us that Peter was a man, John was a man, Paul was a man. Everybody who wrote in this book was not the hand physically of God. But it was people moved by the Holy Ghost. Amen. But the Lord also gave me a new, new thought in responding to that today of, I don't need man to tell me. We all do. We all listen to man. Whether we say, say we do or whether we don't. See, they said that uh, in this passage, they said, if I can say it this way, we don't listen to prisoner man. We don't listen to that man. But they listen to a different one. Amen. They listened to, uh, uh, they ignored Paul. Uh, uh, and 
got to understand. We've got to give them a little bit of sympathy here. Uh, 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 in their mind, Paul didn't know anything about the situation. Uh, 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 and amen. Uh, in the mind of the congregation sometimes, uh, the preacher doesn't know anything about the situation. Uh, 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 amen. Uh, 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 and so in their mind, uh, 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 Paul knew nothing. Uh, uh, and this other person knew all that they needed to know. What I'm saying is this. We all listen to somebody. Yes. People can say all they want to, I don't need man, but they listen to somebody. Amen. And sometimes even that somebody is just us. Sometimes, uh, uh, amen, we ignore uh, good godly advice uh, 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 to listen to the advice of our own consultation. Mm -hmm. And so here, that's what they do. They ignore the warning and assume that the south wind means it was time to go. We always assume that the path of God's will is the one that He'll make the easy choice. But that's not true. See, I told you we'd come back to how Paul ended up here as a prisoner in the first place. That uh, uh, leads up to that in Acts chapter 21. And I'll just read a couple verses and move quickly. Acts 21 verse 11, And when He was come unto us, He took Paul's girdle, as a uh, let me go back to 10. As we tarried there many days, there came down from Judea a certain prophet named Agabus. And when he was come unto us, he took Paul's girdle and bound his own hands yeah. and feet and said, Thus saith the Holy Ghost, so shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind the man that owneth this girdle and shall deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. And when we heard these things, both we and they of that place besought him not to go up to Jerusalem. Then Paul answered, What mean ye to weep and to break mine heart? For I am ready, yeah. not to be bound only, but also to die at Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. And when he would not be persuaded, we ceased, saying, The will of the Lord be done. Now some of your uh, Bible commentaries, I didn't check, check mine today, I know at least one of my Bibles, uh, uh, will say in this passage of Scripture uh, uh, that Paul did wrong. Uh, they'll say, the Lord sent uh, uh, Paul a prophet uh, uh, and he ignored his warning uh, uh, and went on anyway. Uh, uh, and I think, my goodness, uh, uh, have you not read the rest of the book? Uh, uh, have you not read uh, 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 what God was accomplishing? Uh, 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 do you not think that the guy who, uh, amen, who was right after the New Testament might listen to him a little bit. Uh, 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 anyway, that's beside the point. Uh, uh, but what I'm trying to get to is this. Paul knew that what he was doing was the hard way. He knew well in advance. And, and I believe, and, and this is just me again, uh, uh, but I believe that the reason the Lord sent that prophet there to tell him that was not for Paul's benefit, but for our benefit. Uh, uh, that we can read that and know uh, uh, that sometimes that decision that we have to make, uh, uh, that door we have to walk through, uh, uh, is not the easy way. Uh, the south wind is not blowing softly, uh, 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 but the Holy Spirit of God is saying go. Uh, 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 and sometimes that means going the hard way. Amen. And so... The easy way for Paul would have been for him to just keep going anywhere else. Go preach the gospel somewhere else. Or go to Jerusalem, drop off the money, and keep your mouth shut. That's the easy way. But that's not what he did. And the hard way meant getting on a prison ship, meant getting shipwrecked in the Eurachlodon that we stopped reading about, Men being shipwrecked, landing on an island, getting bitten by a viper, uh, 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 and, and then, but then going to Rome, yep. where the Lord told him he needed to go to to begin with. Going to Rome. See, what I'm trying to say is this, and I'll close. In our Christian walk, it does not matter if we're doing things the easy way or the hard way, but it does matter if we're doing things God's way. Amen. I, I appreciate you all this evening. I didn't really, I still wasn't settled in, in the point of the message until your testimonies, Teddy and Lillian, because you gave me a perfect illustration. Compared to me, Teddy, you're doing, do, spreading the gospel the hard way. It's, it's a lot harder, at least to me it is, to talk to somebody on the street or just randomly, even somebody I know, in a different situation outside of the house of God. That's 
the hard way as far as I'm concerned. But that's God's way in your life. Mm -hmm. And that's what He's been using. And that's a blessing. Amen. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 Lillian, uh, uh, amen. To me, uh, uh, that's a very hard way uh, uh, to have somebody come over uh, 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 that, that, that's your neighbor uh, uh, and, and to, to just push that conversation. To me, that's very hard. That's very difficult. That's the hard way. Oh, but that was God's way yesterday. Uh, uh, that was God's way uh, of opening that door. The south wind uh, may not have been blowing softly. Uh, uh, amen. Probably in your heart. Uh, uh, at least it would have been me. Uh, uh, it would have been a struggle uh, 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 to say, well, i got to say this just the right way and not mess it up. I want to uh, I want to make sure I, I, I give him Jesus without, without trying to push him away. Uh, to me, that would have been very difficult. Uh, uh, the south wind would not have been blowing softly. Uh, uh, amen. The storm would have been raging in my soul. Oh, but the Lord, that was God's way in your life. Uh -huh. Amen. And you did it. Amen. Amen. See, sometimes the Lord will just have me to sit and pray where I'm at about something that crosses my mind. The easy way. Sometimes He'll have us to call for the elders of the church. Anointing with oil in the name of the Lord. That's a harder way. But it doesn't really matter as far as His power. He can hear either prayer just as good. Amen. But doing things God's way matters. Yes, it does. Doing things Amen. in His will mattered. I thought about also, thank you, Lord, uh, Roger, about the, the church down there at, at the beach or wherever that was. I can't remember now. But anyway, the church he was talking about, I could not have a church program. I couldn't. But when I got to thinking about that, that's the easy way. It is. It's a lot easier. Okay, let me say it this way and it'll make more sense. It's easier for me to... Oh, if, if I could do it this way, I can, but I'm, I'm just using it as an example. If To just open the Bible, pick a message, and ask the Lord to bless it. That's easier than praying and seeking that He'll give one that He's already blessed. It's easier to plan in advance who gets to do what than trust everyone to mind the Lord. That's easier. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't make it right. Mm -hmm. It doesn't also... See, in our type of churches, everybody will... Well, amen that, 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 that it's not necessarily right to have a program. But they won't amen when you say it don't make it wrong either. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, I, the Lord gave me a new thought on that as you was... Sharing that, Roger. The, if the Lord can give me a message in advance, and He can bless in me having notes, what on earth would make me think that He can't bless and tell somebody else what to do in advance too? Mm -hmm. Amen. Now just because the Lord... Uh, uh, and what I'm saying is this. For us, I don't believe that would be right. I don't feel led to do that. I don't believe that's the will of God for this church. But for them... I don't believe Roger would be going there if he's out of the will of God. Mm -hmm. i got enough faith in Roger uh, 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 to believe that he can tell if somebody uh, uh, is binding the Spirit of the Lord or not. Uh, 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 and so, uh, uh, what would make me think that just because in my mind that's the easy way, mm -hmm. that it's wrong? What matters, what, all I'm trying to say is this. What matters is not the easy way or the hard way. What matters is God's way. Let us pray. Lord, Heavenly Father. Lord, I pray that you take the message and apply it to our hearts. Lord, I don't know if everything came out as clear as you give it to me, but Lord, I pray you'd clarify it on the receiving end too, Lord. I thank you that you're the only one who's able to do that. Lord, we love you. Lord, let us in our life ensure that we're doing things your way. Lord, that we're worshiping your way. That our life is bringing glory to your name, your way. Lord, that we're living your way, Lord. Not worried about whether it's perceived to be the easy way or the hard way, but knowing, Lord, that if it's your way, the results will show that. Lord, we love you. Apply the message to each of our hearts. It's in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. Amen.